folks, it's Michael from Doom and Darkness bringing you another battle report and today it is myself and Stewie, my gut busters against his Nurgle. So this is a CanCon practice. I'm running my CanCon testless. Stewie's running his CanCon testless. It's a rematch because Stewie is yet to defeat my gut busters because they're freaking awesome. So he's out for vengeance. We're playing uh, the better part of Valor in the realm of Chamon. And um, the Realmscape rule that's in effect is Iron Trees. I think that's what it's called, Iron Trees. So let's go have a look sure, at the Sure, my army. friend, please take us through your army. <clears throat> All right, so we've got Gut Rots Boom and Five Black Kings uh, ambushing on. There's Festus, the Leech Lord. Um, there's Ten Black Kings, the Harbinger of uh, Decay. Um, oh, what's it called? Lord of something. Lord of Blights. Lord of Blights. Uh, Lord of Afflictions, Pascal Blight Lords, and then Five Black Kings over there. Right, and you're running a Blight Cyst, is that right? Correct. Okay, and um, anything else? Any special items or spells or anything that you need to know about? Um, so we've got um, the Mudder Grub on him, lets him cast uh, Fowler Genesis, and uh, we've got Plague Squall on the Festus. Plague Squall. Um, and and the Wither Stave. Yeah. All right. And um, for my army over here on the right-hand side, holding an objective by themselves, we have the Tyrant. He's rolled up Long Strider. He's got Wild Fury. Gear Strike is his item, and um, and he's just a boss. Then we have uh, a, um, a Butcher, we have 12 Ogre Bulls, and Larry, that's right, Larry, pay attention, there is 20 Noblars in the center there. So um, let's put them to the test. We have three uh, Man Eaters sitting back, ready to counter wherever they need to be. We have another unit of 12 Bulls backed up by three Iron Guts behind the line and a Butcher in the middle, ready to buff everything. We have two defensive centers, and then one Brave Tyrant with his man-eaters out here trying to hold this objective. So this is probably one of the worst scenarios for me at CanCon. Um, let's see how we go. So, Stewie, you decide who goes first. Uh, I'm gonna take it. Oh, and Stewie's gonna take it. Okay, we'll come back okay, during turn Stuart's one. turn one, and uh, he is playing conservative. This is what happens. He just moves up in the middle, no running across the board for his Blight Kings, and he brings on Gut Rot Spume and his ambushing unit on the left hand side as well. So the right hand side of the board is a bear tempting me to make a run for his rear right hand objective. Or do I need to come across and defend the center? I don't know. We'll find out. So we'll go into my turn two, come back, have a look at it after I'm at the end of my turn one. This is what it looks like. So what did we do? Well, uh, hero face, we put Mystic Shield onto this unit of 12 bulls, supported by the Grots, grots. and then we cast um, Quicksilver Swords as well, which I've just floated out here in the center of the board, into that forest. Uh, I've run my, I'm going for it! The Tyrant, alone, against all odds, is running across the board, trying to get that objective, and going to try and burn it as well. So, um, we're going to roll for initiative now, and we get... A two, he gets a two as well, so it stays in the same order. So Stuart yeah. gets to go first, and I move the endless spell. So this is the end of Stuart's turn two. First thing I'll mention is that um, I had control of the Quicksilver Swords um, because of the initiative. I moved it into his Blight, Pascal Blight Lords, and did seven mortal wounds. I'm rolling 15 dice that are wounding on a five up, five up because he's Chaos 15 because we're in the realm of Chamon. So that is excellent. Um, in his hero phase, he didn't really get any spells of any significance off, except he did change the wheel um, to something, uh, where I'm re-rolling sixes to wound him. So that's cool. And then uh, apart from that, he has just moved up for the most point. He doesn't want to charge um, piecemeal at the moment, so he's holding back, waiting till he's in a position where everything can get in. He did use his, um, his points to summon five plague bearers onto his center objective just to try and make sure I don't sneak in and take that. So we're going to go into my turn two, come back. All right, folks, so the end of my turn, and this is what it looks like. And a um, bit rough in the middle. So uh, at the end of my turn, I, um, I burnt his rear right-hand objective, and I burnt my rear right-hand objective and set off into the middle. That gave me three points, so I'm up three to zero at the moment as we go into turn two. In the center here, um, my Ogre Bulls had Mystic Shield on them and plus one to hit. They charged into the Blight Kings. Because of the charge distance, I was able to get seven in against the Blight Kings. And I think I did I did 11 wounds after all the saves. So they had a four up, five up, um, which is still good. He attacked back and the Blight Kings just freaking exploded. Did 19 wounds through to me, plus whatever the um, the Lord of Afflictions could do. With the, um, the Man Eaters against the Pascal Blight Lords, 
Um, I got six wounds through, uh, I got 12 wounds through to him with just two guys. Um, but obviously with his five up and then five up and then five up, um, he only ended up taking four wounds, I think. So he, he's left with two wounds. So he's left with one on one Blight Lord. So um, I used a command point to auto pass the Battleshock on my Ogre Bulls holding up the center. And now we're going to roll for initiative for turn three. So here we go. And I get a four, he gets a four. It stays the same turn order. I, I, I move the quick silver. No, it's, if it's a draw, so it goes in the same turn order. Oh. Yeah. Oh. So I get to move the quick silver. Salting the rules. Stuart is right. When it's a tie, the winner, the person who went first last time gets to choose. So Stuart, what are you choosing to do? Uh, go second. And give me the double turn. Yes. Okay. All right, folks. So uh, at the end of my turn three, this is what it looks like. So, man eaters came across, across from the left hand of Dekdidaf after burning it. They uh, open up fire with their pistols at the Blight Kings, didn't do any wounds. The Tyrant opened fire with his pistols, didn't do any wounds. Um, we uh, dispelled our Quicksilver Swords and then resummoned it again and threw it across here and uh, finished off one of those Pusco Blight Lords. So, it's really, really strong in uh, this realm. It's excellent. And then all we really did is we retreated our Ogre Bulls out of combat with those Blight Lords because they weren't going to win that fight no matter what. And uh, just tried to get some more bodies around our center objective. But then we charge our Tyrant solo like a hero that he is into the unit of 10 man of Blight Kings, tagging them on the end. We attack using Wild Fury and um, I ended up doing... I got 12 wounds through in total of which some of he, them he saved with his 5 up. Um, so that's cool. And uh, he attacked back. He put three wounds onto me, which is uh, terrifying, but it's just made me even more furious. So at the end of my turn two, I'm just holding on to my last two objectives. He's got two objectives. Actually, turn three, sorry. I'm three points up. We're going into Nurgle's turn right. three. the end of Stu's turn three, and there is combat. So on the left hand side, Gutlock Spume and his two five man units of Black Kings charged in the wall of ogre bulls but without his harbinger to support him he um well he did 20 wounds no sorry 16 wounds killed four bulls and uh in return i killed four blight kings so um the iron gut that's tacked over the back only two of them i hit every time i wounded every time but then he made most of his armor saves that was going to be devastating but a glorious battle over on the left hand side for that objective indeed in the center, the uh, Tyrant with Wild Fury got to attack first, and I did um, 15 wounds through, um, and then he made a couple of five ups after that, and then in return, he managed to kill the Tyrant. So that is sad. I wanted to see one more round of combat. In that um, 15 wounds, that was no double damages. So if I had got some double damages, it would have been amazing. And uh, that's really that. So the end of Stuart's turn three, as we go into turn four, uh, I'm currently up by three points, and the objectives are as they are. So, we're going to roll for initiative now. And I got a five, he gets a two, and it's my choice, and I'm not sure what I want to do. So, I actually chose to give Stuart the um, first turn, because I wanted to control the Quicksilver Swords and try and finish off those Pascal Blight Lords. They had uh, three wounds left on them, on the unit. I move my uh, Quicksilver Swords in, 15 dice doing mortal wounds on fives, and uh, only got through three wounds. And then after his fives and five saves, he only took one wound. So I kind of regret giving away the turn now, but it is what it is. And Stuart, you go into your turn four. At the end of Stuart's turn four, this is what it looks like. What happened? Well, in the center there, he retreated back, shored up his center objective, summoned down another unit of Plague Bearers, tried to make a long bomb charge, into my left hand uh, objective but failed. And um, then we went to combat. The combat was bloody. I lost uh, three ogre bulls from his exploding Blight Kings. My iron guts hit back on the unit of uh, Blight Kings on the right hand side, finish off the last remaining one. And then the Blight Kings, uh, I mean, sorry, my ogres in were able to pile in and uh, kill off three more Blight Kings. So it's, um, it is a battle for the ages on that side of the board. Uh, the center looks fairly safe though. So we're going into my turn four. Okay, so the end of my turn four, this is what it looks like, what happened well. In the center, we pushed out, we got aggressive man eaters and um, 
the six remaining ogre bulls that were fighting in the center ran into his front line of blight kings hoping to take them off the table and secure his center objective or at least get into those heroes um the man he just came in did a heap of damage the uh iron guts put five sorry the ogre bulls put five wounds onto the harbinger um and all my attacks that hit the very last uh, blight king he made all his armor save so i wasn't able to finish the unit off which is sad um, with his heroes piling in and attacking me in the center, I lost four bulls, so I might just run to Battleshock there. I don't have a hero within range, which is terrible. On the other side of the board, the um, my unit of Ogre Bulls, which are fighting his last unit of Blight Kings, uh, piled in and attacked first and killed them all to the man. I have to mention, though, in the hero phase, something amazing happened. The um, the Butcher reached into his cauldron, uh, rolled a 5 or a 6, and so uh, did basically... Rolled a 4 plus to do D3 mortal wounds to Gutrot Spoon, so did mortal wounds to him. Then rolled a 4 plus to do uh, mortal wounds to the unit of Black Kings as well, and did mortal wounds to them as well. I then cast the more on Gutrot Spoon, and I chomped and I chomped and I chomped and I chomped and I chewed him up and ate him whole. So that was awesome. We've secured that objective on the left, allowing my Iron Guts to charge out into the unit of um, Plague Bearers and the last putrid Blight Lord. Um, I put my champion onto the Blight Lord, he only had three wounds left, and the other two Iron Guts onto the, um, the Plague Bearers. The two Iron Guts killed the whole unit of Plague Bearers, but I couldn't get the wounds through um, onto the Blight Lord to finish him off. He's got two left, so they have been a thorn in my side. I've been trying to kill them all game. Just going to roll for Battleshock here in the middle. So four, I need to get a five, so that's going to be nine. I've only got two left, so they are gonna run away. Um, that's terrible and shocking. And now we're gonna roll for initiative for turn five. So uh, I'm still up by three points as we go into turn five and initiative, and I get a five, he gets a three. I get to choose. Oh, I've yeah. chosen to give Stuart the turn because I want to take control of the Quicksilver Swords. I took control, moved over here, and finally did six mortal wounds to that uh, Pascal Blight Lord. He failed his disgusting resilience. He's taken it off. That's absolutely fantastic. And now we're going to Stuart's right, turn. So um, we've just gone into Stuart's turn five and um, we've decided to end the game. So I'm currently up three points. Um, there's no way that he can get across to threaten or contest or take this objective over here. And um, the only hope he's got of getting this objective is if his um, Lord of Afflictions flies across here somehow does 21 wounds and kills two units um, in order to capture that and burn that which is physically impossible for that model to do so um, at the end of his turn he would just burn his two objectives that he still owns giving him 16 points and um, then we go into my turn I'd burn mine giving me another 16 ending it at 19 to 16 a major victory for the gut busters so we'll come back and do an after action so after report. After action report, Gutbusters versus uh, Nurgle Blight Cyst. Uh, major victory for the Gutbusters on um, better part of Valor. Stuart, what were the highlights? What were the lowlights? Where did you go wrong, do you think? What was good? What was bad? <laughs> I don't know. I haven't really thought about it. Uh, all right, so let me just <laughs> take it away. Go. So highlights for me was um, definitely the Quicksilver Swords. They were absolutely amazing yeah. in, um, in against Chaos and also amazing um, in the realm of Chamon. So, I mean, it just, I, I need to put more mortal wounds into the gut busters, it's what they really, really need. And, um, and that was certainly an avenue. The butchers were great, just sitting there being the buff wagons and um, the fact that I did get a big more off one, one round. At, no, no, <laughs> got a big more off and also, reached into the cauldron and um, got Bone Crusher off as well. That was uh, pretty good when needed. The Tyrant, what did you think about the Tyrant, Stewie? Um, pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good, like he did 15, 15 wounds. 15 wounds in one turn. The turn before that he did 12 yeah. and I think he had three rounds. And then the turn before that he did, or maybe that's all he did, 27 wounds over two turns. I feel like that's pretty good for 140 points. Yeah, 160 points. Um, it's pretty good. Disappointed that he didn't live longer and kill more, but um, but it was all right. I mean, and I think whether yeah the loadout, whether it's wild fear or miners right, doesn't matter. To be honest with you, depends on how you're going to use him. Uh, Man eaters were cool. Um, fucking iron guts just went to town. Mm. 
that I rolled, but they only had three and they just pummeled everything. But um, I rolled every single time I was attacking with them, I was hitting like all the time. Yeah, four, like, yeah. Yeah, like six attacks thing. and hit all six times sort of thing and then wound five times. So that's not normal. Um, but when they do do that, they do insane work. Two units of, of 12 Ogre Balls served me well. Um, obviously, okay, 12 Ogre Balls. Can't take 10 buffed up Light Kings. No way. That's a fight they lose. But 10 unbuffed Light Kings, yeah. they can kind of do okay against. Um, so, you know, that's all fine. And, um, yeah, Stewie. So, if you had time to gather your thoughts. Um... I don't know, just thinking about the ogres themselves, like the two, yeah, the two 12-man kind of ogres sitting on both objectives, like it's really hard to move them off with anything that I have, I think, besides from, you know, the one 10-man unit of Blight Kings, but when you're all supported, and if you had the Butcher in there, at, uh, not the Butcher, the Tyra, and that, like they're just, I think they're really dangerous, kind of. Yeah, just... uh, it sort of plays, like with this scenario, um, because there are six different points, yeah. Right. And when you burn them and so forth. So if you have a defensive army, which this Nurgle army that you've got largely is. Yeah. Right. Because of the hard endure and so forth. Yeah. Um, if you're up against an army like mine with a lot of wounds on the objectives, then it's always going to be hard to push across and take mine. Yeah. So you're probably better off just focusing on defending yours. Yeah. And then because you left that one free over there on yeah. the right hand side, it allowed me to get up. And then all I had to do was then defend which... The two. Yeah, well, I kind of... I was hoping I would roll, I think, higher initially in the first one, into, like, first first and second turn on the contagion points. Right. And get... Um, Some summoning over there. Yeah, but I, I think it was bad. And then I'm like, oh, well, I can put two units of ten... Uh, sorry, two units of five into that mob over there and maybe pull something out. Oh. Else, but... I did think you were going to ambush gut rock on on this bottom right yeah. hand corner, but but then if you fail the charge, yeah, then I could just burn the objective and run away. Yeah, and I don't think gut rock and five light kings beat three man eaters and a and tyrant. I, yeah, I don't think they do either. Yeah, like better. Yeah, it's just not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that tyrant would go to town on them. I think yeah. so. Um, I was actually hoping you were going to take that as bait no. and run in there and have the tyrant just take their heads off. But um, uh, that was a good match. That was the um. I'm kind of happy with that. I was, I mean, this is one of my worst scenarios. And it's actually one of yours as well. Yeah. Because you're a low yeah. model count Nurgle. So we might rejig the that list is, a little yeah. bit. Um, but anyways, that's it. For, I thought, what, what did you think about the Realm Worlds? This one was pretty good, but I don't, I don't think it really came into play much. We used the um, Realmscape command ability once. You used it to give oh, your, yeah, your that Blight Kings a, was... a six up. So that was cool. Yeah. And, um, but the Realmscape feature didn't come up. Realmscape feature didn't really... It could have, fighting oh, over yeah, in this yeah. forest, except we never met the requirement of being wholly within. Yeah. Um, so, and... But it did affect the Endless Spell by making the Endless Spell yes. more powerful. Yeah. Um, Be wary of Which that. was sort of fine. Like, I actually... I felt good. Like, it was having some effect. Mm. Um, and it was having a thematic effect by making the Realm of Metal Spell stronger. Yeah. But it, nothing was strong enough to break the game, and nothing was insignificant enough to not have any yeah, impact as well. It went from 12 to 15, which... Yeah, I thought it was good. It's good, but it's not like, you know, 12 to 20 yeah, or something. Yeah, that would be sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that's it, folks. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments below, and um, till next time, ciao, grazie, arrivederci.